All right. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can. Thank you. Excellent. So um, we are um, a bunch of people uh, as part of the uh, Exploring for the Future program who are uh, writing tools for geophysical analysis. And so uh, I tend to think that this name is kind of clever, but you might disagree. High quality geophysical analysis or high QGA. Uh, not all of us here underneath are involved in um, uh, the development of, of this code. Uh, there's about maybe one and a half FTEs at any given time. Uh, that are actually working on, on code development. Uh, but, um, you know, if, if you're working in the, in, the, in the sphere of geoscience, then, uh, well, you, you'd know that you can't get anywhere without, without testing your, um, your algorithms on, on real data and getting feedback from geologists. So, um, you know, that, that's why there's all of these people involved. Um, almost everything has been written exclusively in Julia, and I'm going to speak to you about some of that. And uh, because a picture is worth a million words or a thousand words or however many words you like, um, I will begin with a picture to tell you what we're all about. Um, so if, if like me, you, you, you like food um, and, you, and you like going to uh, places or establishments that uh, serve you good food, um, say you, there's a Michelin star restaurant somewhere, um, then before you get to the Instagrammable food, you know, there's these raw materials that need to be prepared in the kitchen. Uh, you know, there, there's a chef, there's a sous chef, there's someone who does the dishes. And so that, that's kind of where we come in. We're, we're the kitchen. Um, so, so that's your, you know, some geophysical equipment that's, that's collecting data. But look, geophysical data doesn't look anything like you can interpret. You know, that's, for example, in this case, airborne electromagnetics. It's coming to you from a dual transient system. Here are the two transients. And I would challenge any of you to tell me that that looks like perhaps a three layer model as you see over here. So, so this is one of the spheres where we use, um, uh, you know, uh, geophysical tools. Um, and that's where IQGA comes in. Ultimately, we, we'd like to get to the imaging of, of these soundings at every single location that you've carried out the survey in. And, and we'd like to get to the layer cake. And, and that's, you know, continuing with the food analogy, which you, which you'd like to eat. So, um, but the point is that, you know, we're, we're the people in the middle that make it possible for you to have these, you know, mega stations. And um, so often uh, there's not that many of us. Sometimes, uh, you know, one of us or two of us will be everything from the chef to the sous chef to, to the, uh, the dishwasher. But, um, you know, the stuff that you were putting up on LinkedIn or Instagram, et cetera, that really needs to go through some rigorous numerics before it's palatable for interpretation or consumption. Um, so the first thing we need to do in, in geoscience or in geophysics particularly is before we're able to interpret our data, we, we have to know what our data are sensitive to. So, um, whoops, sorry about that. That's just my Mac being a Mac. Um, this is controlled source electromagnetics, and uh, this is a mock-up of uh, the Scarborough gas field, which has recently been in the news. Um, there is your reservoir at about two kilometers depth, and this is a synthetic to do with, um, you know, the, the amplitudes and phases of, of data that you get from marine controlled source electromagnetics. And you can play with these resistivities and move them around and see how the responses change real time. And you can do that using a Jupyter notebook, you can use that at the terminal. Um, you can do that using a fully fledged uh, integrated development editor like uh, VS Code that, that you see over here. Um, you could do the same thing with airborne electromagnetic data. Say you wanted to compare two different systems for um, uh, you know, the same kind of geology. So here's the same kind of geology for two different kinds of systems. One, one looks at uh, dBdt, the other looks at the magnetic field itself. Uh, you can compute the responses. Or say you wanted to do nonlinear regression. So the, there's a bunch of points over here. It could be geochemical data and you want to fill in the gaps. So you can visualize and model all in Julia. And then you can do the inference also all in Julia. And if I flip back and forth between the two, notice how you can now figure out the uncertainties around um, you know, the, the true model. Actually, this is real data that you're looking at in, in this figure from the Scar Scarborough gas field. Um, look how that bunch of points uh, has turned into a drop of milk, because that's what you can do when you do a nonlinear regression. And if you were to move this transect through it, you can actually compute the uncertainties and um, darker colors are less probable, hotter colors are more probable. 
And look, you can compare those two airborne electromagnetic imaging platforms and look at the uncertainties around uh, the true model. And, you know, in, in, to first order, they, they both provide um, uh, the same levels of resolution. And so we're able to play the honest arbiter as the government <laughs> Uh, who can who can say that? Look, you know, as in there's your advertising, but these systems they're both equally good for whatever purposes you might have in minerals, energy, or groundwater. Um, all of this is possible through this idea in Julia known as multiple dispatch. So you can see that these figures look kind of similar. Well, that's because they all use the same code, but they know how to operate on on different kinds of data. And I'm not going to go into the details of multiple dispatch, but I highly encourage you to. to look at this if you're interested in, in finding out a little bit about you know the, the science behind this. And then you could say, well, Anand, all of that is just you know synthetics, but what about real data? So um, a few months ago, I had to you know, operations manage uh, the survey up in Queensland uh, over the intake beds of the Great Artesian Basin. And um, this is production data we're looking at. So I was just looking at um, one line of data. It's about 1,500 soundings over 160 kilometers or so. And I was just able to send this off to our cluster over here at the ANU um, using this code you see on the right. And you know, you, you've got to admit that it's pretty simple. It says, do this from this particular module using the function loop across soundings with all of these soundings with these parameters. And so this is just like writing a notebook, right? And, and look at how you can use symbols over here. You, you can say lambda, beta. So if you're writing the code and you're familiar with the math, it just becomes very intuitive to use. Um, and let's look at the results from that. So there's your 1,125 soundings. Uh, this was done over 960 CPUs. That's 20 nodes for those who care in about 20 minutes or so. And, you know, um, yeah, it, it's just, just so beautiful. Every single geo that I've shown these to has been like, ooh, and ah, and so uh, I hope I'm prompting a little bit of that from the rest of you. But you know, those of you who say, well, this is just one image, and then what about the uncertainties and non-uniqueness and all of that? And so here we are. Uh, you can do a Bayesian inversion. Um, it, I use the same number of CPUs, the same number of nodes, but because you're sampling multiple numbers of times, well, <laughs> it's going to uh, take a lot of time, right? Um, so it, it, this one took quite a lot more time, but um, you get the message. You can do a deterministic inversion. Um, you can do um, Bayesian inversions to figure out the uncertainties. So, so all the good stuff, it's all within the package. And, um, you know, so you can say what reality, uh, what, what bearing does that have on reality? And, and this is what um, the hydrologists and geologists in the area have painfully put together with outcrop information. And look at how similar it is to, you know, the conceptual models. Uh, to what we've inverted. And, um, you know, so you can fill in these question marks that the uh, state agencies have. Uh, this is hot off the press. Uh, I know that this looks like a Jefferson Airplane album cover, but uh, this is work that's recently been done by um, Richard Taylor and kind of figure out the angles to which um, water molecules in the earth are tipping when we excite them with um, a loop field on the surface of the earth. And this is basically like, magnetic resonance imaging, but in the subsurface to figure out water content. This is also part of our um, uh, tool suite. So ultimately, why use Julia? You know, um, extend methods easily. You add a method, you can use previous methods for plotting or finding the misfits and things like that. It's parallel out of the box. Those of you who are familiar with gradient descent, this equation should spring out at you. Your new model is your old model plus some step size times the gradient and so it's, it just reads and writes like math. Um, yeah, top class numerical and viz libraries, it's open source. There's questions you can ask the user community. And most importantly, pr my productivity has just shot up because as I said, I'm the sous chef all the way to like the dishwasher because um, instead of using Python or some proprietary high level programming language like Sumlab, um, <laughs> You can then go to, you know, you can prototype, you can visualize and go Fortran, C, C++, message passing interface to do your parallelization, then do your high performance computation, then go to Python, none of that. Just do it all within Julia. And if you're prototyping, developing, visualizing, running, doing any of these things or all of these things, you can do it all within Julia. And, and that's, that's the great part about it. So this is the current list of functionality that we have. Um, you can add your own. And the nice thing is you won't have to compile anything. Just say add the package 
hit enter and it should be done. And um, it's already in an advanced stage of development, but because you know, if we release it, um, you will have questions. So we'd like to release it in a forum that's easy for people to use. So we're aiming for next financial year for, for release. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll take any questions if, if there are any, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Have you tried scaling it up further? Say what? Like uh, 100 machines, 1,000 machines? Um, I've gone as far as about 40 uh, nodes. So that's about 2,000 CPUs. Yeah. 2,000 CPUs is what I've comfortably done. Yes. And at which point in time, like a network, network infrastructure also might be a hindrance, right? And that's not under my control. But yeah, yeah it scales very nice. To step out of your HPC eventually to get more capability. Or... Uh, I wouldn't underestimate the NCI, uh, but you can also do all of the stuff on the AWS. Yeah. Well, lots of people use the NCI at once. That's the problem here, yeah, in case in that sense. But... Very true, very true. All these people with their statewide inversions or whatever, like uh, using up your time there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anand. Um, Richard Blewett has put a comment in the chat saying that the fidelity of the AEM slices is amazing. Um, and he also has a question for you. Uh, have you tried this on MT data? Uh, no, but, but Richard, you seem to have figured out all of our uh, future plans. That is indeed uh, in the pipeline because that is, you know, um, as, as they say here, um, it's low hanging fruit. That is immediately something we can do. And, and with the, uh, you know, the, the infrastructure that we have in place. Um, it's a cinch to be able to do joint inversions because, you know, as, as I've said over here, um, you can add your own, which means, um, you know, it's, it's not that difficult to add in, uh, you know, new functionality, but yes, that is definitely in the works. And just one more, Kate Hein would like to know if there's any chance of a training course on this one. Um, definitely, as a do write to me and I'll, I'll try and put that to the powers that be. They'd be delighted to, to offer such things, I think. So, um, yeah, I, I don't see why not. 